We're Tyler and Todd, and a year ago we parked our RV in the middle of the Canadian forest with the dream of one day building our own home here. We've brought you along every Sunday as piece by piece we've cultivated the land into our own. Last Sunday we built a perfect setup to grow our own fruits and veggies, and today we're shifting gears so we can start generating our own electricity. Come along. So instead of boring you with another full day of us moving gravel around the yard, we made the decision to install another one of these wood shelters yesterday. It actually took 10 loads of loading gravel, pulling it in the ATV. It was so much work. It was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> but we are really impressed with how the seasoning sheds work. So we yeah. installed the first one in December and then we put the wet wood into it and it's dry now. So one issue we found up there, we have just like a regular car port that we put the wood in and it doesn't have proper airflow. So the water was leaving the wood, hitting the ceiling and then falling back down. It was down. basically like raining inside. Yeah. Why don't we just quickly show them? So this wood went in wet in December and it's dry to burn now. And it holds three and a half cord. So between the two of them, we only have to like do wood once every two years. We'll be good. I mean, we do wood more than that, but. Um... <laughs> the goal for today is, as we told you guys last week, this band of trees needs to go because our solar panels are going right there. To keep this really brief and not as scientific as it should be, in if you want the full science version, like, this isn't the channel. <laughs> yeah, this is not the channel for you. <laughs> so anyway, in short, because we are so north, the uh, tilt of the Earth's axis in the winter is in such a way that we don't get a lot of direct sunlight, typically only two to three hours of direct sun hitting the panels. And with solar panels, there's a thing called solar irritants, which is a unit of measurement that is the amount of solar radiation per inch that hits the panel that creates energy and we get virtually none in the winter so optimum placement is just like the number one priority. Tyler's been doing a lot of work on the solar system and he almost has the whole thing designed and figured out but it's looking like it's going to be a beast of a system once we get ready for it. Yeah. So we're going to get to cutting these trees because if they're in the way we're not going to get any sun on the panels and we're just going to sit in the dark. Hey buddy. You want to say hi to the vlog? Hi sweetheart. <laughs> All right. Ready to cut some trees? Ready to go. Oh, we're gonna cut trees. We're gonna cut the trees. All right, we're, we're gonna, gonna get started. Trees. You try to catch your breath, fall back in the round in circles, and I'm just as tired as you. And I can't find an excuse. We can do it. I can. Yes. I have One, two, three. I'm oh. done. One, two. You're not pushing hard. Oh. <laughs> like this is not an effective use of time. I really want to timber it. Yeah, well, you know what I'll do? I'll cut out a wedge and you can drop it. Really? Let's go get the saw. Okay. All right, so we've cleaned up the first bit of brush and stuff, and now we're going to start cutting trees. We figured the best way to do this is in little sections at a time where we'll clean out the undergrowth, drop a couple trees, clean that up, and move on to the next section. So, a lot of work. yeah, a lot of work, but it's the moment everyone's been waiting for because the orange chainsaw chaps are gonna make an appearance today. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm sure everyone was just on the edge of their seat. On the edge of their seats. You already have so many like sticks and stuff in your hair. I know, I think I'm gonna it's shave like... my head. No, you're not doing that. I feel like Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get dressed. Okay. All right, so the way a chainsaw works is there's actually an oil that goes in here called chain oil, and that's what lubricates the chain as it's spinning around. And we don't have any, so not really prepared for cutting trees. So we're gonna actually have to run into town and pick some up, and I think I'll get a spare chain while we're in there because I have a very bad tendency of hitting rocks when I'm cutting, and I hate sharpening my chains. That's really annoying. <laughs> All right, you ready? Chaps off, and here we go. Don't you feel it, don't you feel it, don't you feel it? All 
All right, so now that we've finished running our errands for the day, we wanna take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Interac. If you've been watching our videos for a while, you've probably pieced together that at some point during our projects, we're gonna make at least one trip to the hardware store. It's been like three or four lately, <laughs> but yeah. But we're able to save time on these trips by using Interac's contactless payment feature. When we get to the cash register, all we have to do is take our debit card and touch it to the debit terminal and the payment is processed safely. But without question, our favorite feature is the ability to send an Interact e-transfer no matter where we are in the world. This is super important for us to be able to run our Airbnb business on the other side of the country. We no longer have to send checks in the mail for our cleaning crew or to pay a contractor if something breaks. And the best part is we actually get an email notification once the funds have been deposited. That way we know the money has safely made it to the right person's bank account. So whether it's running our business on the other side of the country or this new project of building our own home here, Interact is going to be a part of our daily life. But we're going to make our way back to the land because those trees are not going to remove themselves from the solar field. And I think I need to get a coffee on the way. Yeah. You guys want a coffee? Oh yeah, double, <laughs> double. <laughs> All right, we'll catch up with you guys in a bit. All right, we are just getting back from the store and we have everything that we need to get the chainsaw up and running. So the plan of attack is Todd is gonna man the chainsaw and I'm gonna follow behind and sort all of the wood into three different piles. So the first pile is all of the dead wood on the forest floor, like sort of the debris that we really can't do anything else with. The second pile is gonna be wood that has a circumference of less than four and a half inches because what we're gonna do with that is actually get a wood chipper so we can reuse all of that wood for our garden beds and um, all that kind of stuff. The third pile, we're gonna stack and put in that wood seasoning shed because the goal from doing this whole project is all of the trees that we cut down are obviously going to be used to power our house. So we're going to have a wood stove insert in the house that we build back there for heat in the winter. That's supplementary from heat pumps. So we've done a lot of research and heat pumps seem to be our best, most efficient option. They will run on the solar panels. So it's really cool that this is like all sort of a cycle, all providing us the energy and everything that we need from the land. Plus it's, we're getting a workout. Plus a workout, yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. Gonna get started on that now. I started the shredding pile, or chipping pile. Yeah, so you can kind of see. See how like narrow all of this wood is? It would be so much work to chop it and to like pile it and stuff. And to burn it in the house doesn't make sense. So with firewood, there's a BTU limit. So each type of wood has a different basically amount of heat that it generates. So the harder, more dense wood provides more heat. So that's worth your time where these are alders, which have a very low BTU rate. Is that a good way to explain it? Yeah, but what's BTU stand for? Burn time unit. <laughs> I, don't, I actually have no idea. Me either. Probably something about that. Something sophisticated. something sophisticated. One BTU is roughly equal to the amount of energy required to raise one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. All right, we are gonna get started on this. I was just gonna so, say, Todd's pretty adamant to get I've this I've been lit. so excited for this. So this is our stump pile from when they grubbed off the solar field last fall. And they've been sitting here and we're actually running out of time to burn up the stumps because the ground is um, drying really quick and really early this year. Once all this is gone, we're gonna get equipment in again. And unless we end up buying something at the auction tomorrow, which we're really optimistic that we're gonna get an excavator because I just think there's so many things that we can do with it. Like we can dig a pond and- Sand high. Anyway, um, maybe put in a pool, but they- oh. uh, <laughs> Anyway, we're just gonna like burn it up and then hopefully it'll create some ash that we can use in our gardens or in the soil in the greenhouse, mix it into our compost because wood ash does have like, I think it's a lot of nitrogen and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there are some good chemicals and properties of it to reuse to make our gardens beautiful. Yeah, so we're really trying to upcycle everything that we can and make the best use of all of the resources that we have, so. Yeah, I'm going to get a lighter. All right. Washing my face will be a lady after the show. All of my friends back in a lady places we go. I'll keep it locked away, trying to face taking it slow.
Time. Thank you. No worries. This looks oh. really good. Oh yeah. I just made lunch. Nice little salad. Um, this is an incredible amount of work, eh? Yeah. But we're working on the land and working on our fitness. So we're coming out like double ahead. I like the way we're doing it. Before we would just drop everything and yeah. make a mess. And my dad kept saying, don't do that. You're making more work for yourself. I didn't understand why he wanted to do it in like quadrants, but unless you do it that way you're gonna be tripping over wood and it's just an absolute mess so. it's not as safe and especially with like two people like with me working the saw it's easier to know that ties in a different area yeah it's definitely gonna take us probably a week to do this which is okay we're just gonna do it every day a few hours a day and it'll yeah. get done we don't want any type of stress or um i don't know we just want to have fun along this process and if we're not feeling it, we're on our own schedule. So if we're, we hit a wall and we need a break, well then we're done for the day. Exactly. And I think that's a healthy way to do it. I agree. Like this is like something we've dreamed of doing forever. Mm -hmm. We need to enjoy it. That wind is Me helping too. the fire. Yeah, it is. It's also helped me cool down. Sweating in a few, few different places. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna fuel up and keep going. Get back to it. We don't have to. So that was a close call. Yeah, this is why you wear chainsaw pants. This took the brunt of it, not my leg. But that's, that's actually um, pretty insane, Todd. So these are specifically designed to stop that. You could have lost your leg. I know, could have called me peg like Todd. <laughs> Anyway, I think it's a sign that we're done for today. So I'm gonna sit in the chair for a little bit while this burns down and then I think we're gonna go shower. Yeah, I, I mean. I feel kinda gross. Is it all over my face? Like mud city. <laughs> I'm really proud of what we accomplished today. It looks really, really good. Why don't we quickly show them? Okay. We've got most of it done. The perimeter is cut, so we just have to get the little bit that's still inside, so. Do you guys want to say hi? Eddie always goes for the neck. He's a dirty fighter. Hey, boys, we're trying to vlog here. We're trying to wrestle. Um, yeah, I think it looks really good. So now there's just a few softwoods to come down and then we'll just do all these maples that are left. And this is our pile to chip. I'm so excited for that. The gardens are ready. They're ready. They're saying mulch me. So that's what they're saying. They're whispering it in the wind. All right. Do you want to go shower? I want to sit for a little bit. I haven't sat since lunch. All right. And I don't want to leave this fire unintended. So oh, I'll let it yeah. die down a little bit and then we'll go shower. All right. Good job today, team. Good job, team. Making that dream work. Yeah. All right. We're going to go sit for a bit and just chill. Oh, this feels nice. <laughs> All right. Let's go. So we are back and showered and just gonna make some food and call it a night. Today was kind of a busy day. I'm very happy with the amount of work that we got done, but I won't lie, I was kind of optimistic that maybe we'd have it all cut and like cleaned up and sorted and then also split and put into the seasoning shed. But I mean, there's always tomorrow. I'm telling you, this guy runs a tight ship, you guys. <laughs> Breaks, unless you're unionized, do not ask me for a break. Anyway, I'm just gonna make us some dinner and I think we're just gonna curl up and watch a movie. I have like nothing left and all I did was like move the stuff. Cutting it I feel like is even more work. Well, I just feel like I got a new lease on life having an extra leg. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, guys. We're gonna go to bed. Good night. <laughs>
Good morning. So we ended up sleeping in a little bit later than we had planned today. We have that auction that we told you guys about, so we're running late, but... Yeah, that's what happens when the alarm goes, we both look at each other and <laughs> decide without even speaking that we're not getting out of bed right now, so... Yeah, we don't sleep in often, but the day that we had yesterday... Yeah, I, I think we deserved, deserved it. it. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna pick up some Timmy's on our way, and we're gonna, gonna drop the boys off to go see Grandma and Granddad while we're there, because we're going to just outside of Truro, Nova Scotia, which is like an hour from yeah. us, so... Yeah, I gotta get there early. I've got my eye on a fire truck. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll catch you there. <laughs> what do you think of this? Pretty cool. Yeah. I think it would be perfect for moving gravel around. We could move some wood in it. And then also we could probably do the driveway in the yeah. snow. Who are we? I have no clue. If you told us a year ago that we'd be so excited to go to an auction for heavy equipment, what about your line? So we just finished looking at everything. The auction actually doesn't end for four hours. So everything's done online um, because of COVID, obviously. So we still have some time. So I think we're gonna head home and really make 100% sure, measure out everything on the land. It's a big commitment. So we obviously need to make the best decision. So you I'm glad- You were a big commitment, but I think I made the best decision. I'm glad we came out and- um, Nothing. That doesn't melt your heart. No. Put me as like a nominee for husband of the year, nothing. No, half the things you say are so cheesy anyway, so. Well, we're off to the land then. All right, see you guys soon. All right, so we just got home a couple minutes ago and Ty ran to his computer because there's a few things that we're bidding on that the auction actually closes in what, like two minutes? Two minutes. So there's 50 seconds left, 49 seconds left, and we're the high bidder on this. This is really stressful. We got it? We got it, yeah. Okay. That's awesome. That's really sweet. So we got the wood chipper and saved like 900 bucks, which is really good. Brand new, sealed in the crate. Yeah, like look, it's in the box. We actually went and looked at it. There's no damage to the and, case or anything. Yeah, and it's not like we're settling. This is the exact wood chipper that we were gonna order and we just waited two weeks. Yeah, it accepts trees five inches in diameter. I also think it's good to have this type of stuff because we've been borrowing equipment from some family and some friends and it's kind of nice to own a piece of equipment that we can lend back and kind of like pay it forward, which is part of the reason we moved back here is sort of that- That's a really good point. Like able to help each other community. We didn't have that in Edmonton and I think it's very hard to find that in a large city. Like we lived in a house for three and a half years and didn't even meet our neighbors until the last summer. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we're just really excited for us, but also the potential to start paying people back for all the help that we've been getting from family and friends with, um, work here at the land. So totally. Yeah. Okay. okay. We will bring you along or catch up. <laughs> I don't know. This is kind of a it's hectic a day. day but, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, going to be some wine tonight. All right. Is it time? It is time. Bidding on an excavator. How are you feeling? Nervous. You look so good in that Costco shirt. Gotta love their clothes. Oh God, I'm shitting nickels. I'm so nervous, Tyler. This is going for way, this is way too much. 29, it's at 30, like people are stupid. This is what exactly what Mark was saying. Well, this was a day well spent. Don't be negative. Like I'm not in the mood. Well, like we've got shit to do and we spent all this time. I won't lie, that auction kind of sucked. Yeah, it's like eight hours later, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of annoying because we had put a lot of our eggs in that one auction basket. And yeah, yeah. now, I don't know. I will admit I was kind of hot tempered. Um, it wasn't it, a great afternoon. <laughs> it was kind of a boiling point and like a culmination of a bunch of frustrations along this project that all just like hit when we just couldn't even do like our own thing. So yeah, yeah. we haven't talked about it, but we've been waiting like probably like two months for this auction. And um, we really thought that we were gonna get a lot of equipment. It's great, we got the wood chipper, obviously. We're happy about that, but um, we're sort of- We're gonna have the best mulched gardens on the street. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're gonna figure it out. It's just, I don't know. We're just feeling a little bit disappointed to be honest, but that's fine. Like yeah. we'll figure it out. Nothing we can do about it, but next week's a new week, so. Join us next week when we figure out how to build a pond for our geese without an excavator. <laughs> See you next Sunday.
I said, oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. I get my pieces out. Georgia. I get my weed from California. What's the moment gone, you know it's gone. Don't you ever try to take too long. What's the moment gone, you know it's gone.